Tonight on First Tuesday, babies at the frontier of medicine. But for Jonathan, time is short. Well, that was it. We were told then that he was going to die. And the Cervezo disaster in Italy. Ten years on, are they still paying the price? Good evening. Our first film tonight is the story of a group of babies at the frontier of medicine. Babies whose only hope of survival is major surgery at very considerable risk. Babies who must have a liver transplant or die. The transplants are done at Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge, which is one of only two such centres in the world. As a result, there's pressure on the unit. The demand for transplants exceeds the supply, while the finance available for what is pioneering medicine imposes a strict limit on the number of operations that are performed. So children who wait the first time such an operation has been filmed in Europe is about acute dilemmas for parents, doctors and the health service. In a few hours, this little girl will have an operation that could save her life. Riot Haddad from Israel is 22 months old. She was born with biliary atresia, which means her bile ducts are blocked. A liver transplant here at Addenbrooke's Hospital Cambridge is her only chance of living. After an anxious three-month wait, a donor has been found just in time. Rayot's deteriorating so fast that without that transplant, she will die within a few weeks or even days. A snowbound northern airport. A surgical team from Addenbrooke's arrives to remove the liver from the young child donor. Size and blood group must match. It's a race against time. Before the donor liver deteriorates, they have just eight hours to return to Cambridge and complete the transplant. I feel very nervous. And uh, we think about the operation, we know what it is. And uh, we wait and all the time look, the watch, the, and look. Do you feel uh, confident that everything will be all right in the yes, operation? Yes, and uh, we feel very happy because she feels very, very ill now. And uh, the doctor said if she starts, if she bleeding again and again, maybe she died. And uh, when they come and they say we have a donor, we are a liver, we are very happy because this is the time, this is the, the, exactly the time to do it now. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm very nervous. And I... I want... She feel good. The Addenbrooke's transplant team is led by Professor Roy Kahn. Since 1968, he's been one of the world pioneers in transplantation surgery. Is that healed up all right? Now, Addenbrooke's leads the field. It's one of only two hospitals in the world regularly performing liver transplants on children. It's a new program run with King's College Hospital and is just two years old. Between 70 and 100 children could benefit from a transplant, but many families are not told about the transplant option. So last year, Khan's team undertook 13 child transplants. But even for 13, donors are hard to find. Well, this is a, a very, very major difficulty that uh, at least four of the children who've died uh, could have been re-transplanted if, if a donor liver had been available. And of course, 
there are a number of children on the waiting list for a very long time before they, they have uh, transplants and we've had a few parents who dearly wanted transplants for the children but no donor liver became available early enough and the children died. Unfortunately we are um, experiencing that. We've already lost five children on the waiting list this year um, purely because a donor, a suitable donor liver didn't become available for them in time. And although, as I've already said, so many people are trying to help the program if they're in a situation that they have to consider this, um, one needs a large supply of suitable donor organs to treat um, the children who are waiting. It could be that um, on one day a referral is made to this hospital and we just don't have a suitable recipient patient on that particular day. The next day the situation may have changed, but it may be a day too late uh, for the child. Even worse, not only are children dying through lack of donors, but precious livers are being turned away because no money is available for additional intensive care facilities and staff. The intensive care unit naturally has uh, extremely busy spells and if there is no bed available and, or no nursing staff then we're not able to proceed. How many livers have you turned away this year then? We were, for, for that reason, um, probably uh, between five and seven children and uh, probably the same number for the adults. How do you feel about turning away children's livers when they're in such short supply? Well, we all of us feel extremely upset. Um, we are acutely aware that if that happens, um, it is possible that another opportunity may not come for that particular child. So we do everything we can um, to proceed. Twenty-month-old Jonathan O'Rourke from Liverpool is also waiting for a new liver. Without one, he will die within a year or probably sooner. I don't know if you can distract him at all. Oh. Ah! Okay. Do you think we can sit him up for a minute? Jonathan's been on the urgent transplant list for two months and is still waiting. There we are. Surgeons have already tried two conventional operations without success. Now a transplant is his only hope. What does this have to do? What sort of noise does a pussy cat make? Wave, wave, wave. Wave, wave, cat. Yes. Well, that was it. We were told then that he was going to die. But we didn't really know when. We just asked them, well, what, what, you know, what is his lifespan? And all they could say was roughly two, two and a half, um, possibly three, depending on how his liver deteriorated. Um, but he's such a happy baby. He always has been. And so he sort of, I don't know, he picks you up. So you're able to carry on. It, it doesn't seem to affect him as much as us. <laughs> which is, I suppose, normal, really. He does pick us up, he does. You know, there's no way about that. I, he's never in a bad humour. He's always happy. And I suppose uh, he makes us happy every morning we wake up, basically. He's still there. Once upon a time, there were three bears who lived in a little house in a wood. Father Bear was a very big bear. If he was a soldier, he'd have the easy as far as I'm concerned. And uh, when he wakes up in the morning, he pops his head out of the cot and he's, da, da, ma, ma, and then... So, you know, we have to carry on, basically. You know, there must be something there. You must be in with a chance. A medium-sized bow for Mother Bear and a tiny little bow for Baby Bear. Two-year-old elder Dana from Naples is also on the urgent transplant list. For five weeks, she's been living in Cambridge just waiting for a liver to become available. So many hospitals, Naples, Milan, Rome. In Milan, Elder had exploratory surgery, and about six weeks ago they told me that she only had a short time left to live. I shall never give up going to other doctors. So is coming to Cambridge to have a liver transplant, is that Elder's last chance? 
Riot's transplant is set for 5 a.m., four hours wait. The chances of surviving the operation are around 65%. with our team um, and the liver looks perfect. Yes? Yeah. So that's the next bit of good news for you. Yes. Okay? Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, they're, they're I think there. we're just on time. Yes. So five o'clock is going to be just fine. All right? Yes. How's she, how she been in the last? She's okay. She's yes. going to wake up and talk and want oh, to eat. Oh, lovely. Kai. Kai. Oh, right. oh, yes. That's a good sign. Say, Daddy, Mommy. Sure. If she can complain. Yes. She's quite happy. Mm. All right. So, right. We're on schedule now. Five o'clock. Mm. Anything mm. else you want to know? And it's a hard time for you, isn't it? Very hard. Okay. Well, I'll come back about half past four. Really? And, uh, I know you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back after the service. Right. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye. For Jonathan, it's still an endless round of tests and examinations. His ultrasound test establishes if a vital vein needed in the transplant is clear. If it's not, Jonathan's operation cannot go ahead. There. Now uh, that's like quite a nice picture of the portal vein there within the liver. There you've got And you can take up the measurement of that. The diameter of that there is seven millimeters there, so that's a pretty good size. Good news. The vein is clear. The transplant can go ahead if a liver can be found. The donor liver has been removed. The doctors head back to Cambridge, where a second surgical team will take over. Thank 
עבודה טובה. נכון. For the family, it's goodbye. They know that out of 28 child transplants undertaken here, 11 children have died. A one in three chance of not surviving is all too real. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, because inside of the... Is that all right? Do you want to say goodbye again? Oh, no. Okay. Um, I think it's probably better if you stay here because inside the doctors immediately want to put her to sleep and then um, do all the necessary preparation. Okay. Now I'll come and find you, as I said, all the way through and I'll come and tell you how things are going. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now go and get yourself yes, some coffee. Tea. Come and have a cup of tea. tea. Okay. Mm. All right. Israeli charitable donations have met the £20,000 cost of Reut's operation. But her operation highlights the fundamental dilemma the health service is facing. Technical advances mean that British doctors can now save the lives of children who three years ago would certainly have died. But the health service just can't satisfy the demand for transplants from desperate parents. As Addenbrooke's patients come from all over Britain and Europe, the Department of Health makes a special grant. But this is thousands of pounds short of the real requirement. So a limit of 50 adult and child transplants has been laid down. The central government provides this year a funding for, of £859,000 to fund liver transplant operations. Now, that needs to be then related into individual numbers of cases. We believe that that amount of money will cover uh, about 50 transplant cases. And I say about not because we don't know, but because individual cases cost different amounts, but broadly 50 cases. There are also pressures, though, on other facilities. It's not just a question of money. The amount of pressure that a liver transplant puts on the intensive care unit, for example, on intensive nursing, on ward capacities, on laboratories, all those sorts of things come under enormous pressure. It seems to me that we're dealing with people who are suffering, who deserve treatment the same as anybody else in the community. Uh, there's no outcry about the sum of money involved, for instance, in taking care of somebody born with brain damage in an institution until he dies, perhaps, of natural causes at the age of 70. Now, I don't know what that figure would be as far as a drain on the community. I don't know if you could guess, but it would be, I would think, enough to do quite a number of liver transplants. Why is it that somebody who's got a perfectly normal brain who can be restored to the community in a normal way, if they're fortunate after a liver transplant, why should they have the uh, no-go sign put in front of them? I don't think it is right, and I don't think that the community would accept this as being right. There's no way in which you can measure, uh, certainly no acceptable way at the moment that you can measure the benefits and the costs involved in a liver transplant against the number of replacement hips you could do or the number of uh, varicose vein operations, whatever the routine function is. What we try and do is to keep a balance between them and we try and base that balance on a best and generously interpreted estimate of how many transplants the money that we get from central government will actually genuinely cover. Because obviously if we do more transplants, and the team would like to do more, and I understand and sympathize with that, but if we do more than the central government funding will actually pay for, the money for those actually comes out of the pocket 
that's reserved for district medical services for normal routine cases. The m money has been allocated to us, um, which we are using. I think something that we hadn't recognized was how many uh, patients were going to present requiring the treatment. I know it's constantly under review, and we're hopeful that more money will become available for us. But originally, we just didn't know. The cost of the treatment has become cheaper. Uh, once become, we've become more proficient at it, and um, the time in hospital is now not so long. That makes the cost of the operation or the treatment in Addenbrooke's hospital less than it was. I think it's just that we didn't recognize initially how many children would need treating. The reality of it all is that some people might well finish up dying. That is always the end situation that when, if you like, in crew terms, when the chips are down, you run out of available funds and you can't do desirable things that you would want to do simply because the resources aren't there. Do you need the money? And I mean, when you look at the money that's ploughed in to uh, these various uh, hospitals, that's collected through charity. I mean, there must be something wrong somewhere along the line. If my son dies through the lack of funds and the lack of people's ignorance in donating livers. They're doing all the surgery now, taking out the old diseased liver. It looks bad liver. And that'll be about another half hour, three quarters of an hour, mm -hmm. and then they'll be able to put in a new yeah. liver. She's maintaining a very stable condition. Her blood pressure is satisfactory, and the bleeding problems are not too bad. Okay. What is the bleeding? The blood loss during the operation is mm -hmm. quite satisfactory. You know what I've been done? You understand mm -hmm. that? Yes, yes, yes. And the whole team are there. And the she's really... Will. Yes, Professor Khan's there, yes. And she's maintaining quite a stable condition. <laughs> All right, sweetheart. Good boy. <laughs> By choosing a transplant, Jonathan's parents know he will suffer more pain and endless tests. They also know it's his only chance of life. The operation must come soon so that Jonathan is in peak condition and capable of withstanding massive surgery. That wasn't too bad, was it? <coughs> what a brave boy! on really quite nicely now the yeah. operation and the new liver is in? transplanted yeah oh and it's in it's in yeah mm. so the major part of the operation is now finished and she's tolerated this very well so far no well, she's uh... she's very stable obviously um she's lost quite a lot of blood in inevitably during such an operation but not more than we would normally expect mm -hmm. and she's remained very stable uh, throughout the whole operation okay mm -hmm. and hopefully um, this liver will start working right, straight no, away yes. and then there should be no further problem with the bleeding no the work, this, uh... well immediately uh, it's difficult to say but no, we but will see some of that bile you know the yellow you stuff see? we'll probably see some later today we'll be looking for them later today mm. now the, the liver is 
in. And the tummy is closed? Not closed no, yet. No, they want no, to look no, but the blood and the oil. That's right. Mm -hmm. And just make sure that everything's all right mm -hmm. before, um, before the professor close. finally closes up. Oh, oh yes. Right, we've got the results and they're good again, I'm glad to say. This time round, Jonathan's liver seems to be functioning pretty well. Um, everything's holding up as compared with the last lot. And the ultrasound test was good too. The vein that's going to be needed for the operation is fairly wide open and easy to see. So we're pleased with this and we're very pleased with him. I mean, he's doing beautifully, isn't he? Doing very, he's very come well. on a lot since we saw him. He's grown well. He's developing normally. Indeed, apart from his colour and the scar on his tummy, you wouldn't really know there was anything the matter with him at the moment. But of course, that doesn't really change the fact that we know his outlook is very poor mm -hmm. if nothing is done. I mean, he's sitting on a bit of a time bomb, poor old Jonathan, in that he could at any time have a serious bleed from these enlarged veins that he will have inside his swallowing tube. Um, and that's quite a dangerous complication and could happen pretty suddenly. Um, he could also get an infection pretty suddenly. Uh, if neither of those happen, then the matter is a more gradual downhill progression with the liver just failing because it can't excrete the bile. And uh, what happens if we don't get a liver from him? And, you know, what's his chances? He if will inevitably die mm. early and really we think within a year or two if he doesn't. Mm. Elder Dana from Naples was one of the unlucky ones. After nearly three months, desperately waiting for a liver to become available, she finally had her transplant operation. But three days later, on Christmas Eve, she died. There you go. 
So although Rayot is over the major hurdle, in the next days and weeks, her life is still very much at risk. And then in a moment we'll put her back on the breathing machine mm -hmm. here yeah. and she'll settle down. She wet, no? Yeah, she's wet. Yeah. 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 Sit back on the breathing machine again now. Mm. That's a good girl. Oh, I can go yeah. hold that hand. Mummy can hold that hand. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's a good girl. Better. That's fish. Yeah. She might just take a few minutes to settle yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. In Liverpool, Jonathan is still waiting for his transplant. He's been on the urgent list for six months, and time is running out. Yeah, wrinkle your nose. We see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel now, we do. But it's a long tunnel. So we've got to keep fighting and fighting and fighting until we get out. And we hope against hope that we will win this race against time. I don't know if you ever climbed a mountain. I've climbed many a mountain in my time. You get to the summit. That's great. It's coming down the other side. You're in darkness. And I think that's what I'm scared of more than anything in my life is the darkness on the other side of that mountain. Then he heard Bertie. Goodbye, Thomas. You must be tired. Sorry, I can't stop. We buses have to work, you know. Goodbye. What an agonizing wait that must be. And how agonizing too for the doctors as they decide which of their tiny patients are in most urgent need of a transplant. As it happens, in the case of Jonathan, there was no choice. The liver transplanted into Reut would not have been suitable. So while Reut is recovering slowly in hospital, Jonathan is still waiting for a suitable donor. The dilemma of funding such work, of course, persists. In a moment, we go to Italy for the Cerveso inheritance. That's after the break.